Hey there. Today I would like to talk about a pen that is a bit of a specialty pen to the sense that it is actually made for calligraphy. But it comes with a variety of nibs and some of these nibs can actually be used for daily writing. Uh, so I thought it would still be interesting to do this video and perhaps it is of use to some of you. Now I should point out first that this is uh, a review of a pen by a typically Dutch brand. And it is called Bruinzeel. And that is the only correct way to pronounce it. So I wish all of you Anglo-Saxon people out there good luck in pronouncing that because I think the, the O sound is usually difficult to make. I know this from experience uh, with uh, British and some American people. So I'm not making fun of you, not at all. It's just I can now picture you all going ow, 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 sort of behind your computer screen. Now the correct pronunciation is Brownsville. Right, so um, Brownsville is a, a typically Dutch company. It is still in the Netherlands, it is in uh, Bergen op Zoom, which is a nice city. Um, I guess I've never been there, but I'm sure it's a nice uh, little town. Um, Brownsdale is most famous for its pencils. So I think every Dutch primary school pupil will get a pencil when, it, when he or she learns to write, and it will, I think, nine out of ten times be Brownsdale. And these are rather famous sort of red-like uh, pencils. Uh, and, and really they have some fame in this country. So I thought it would be interesting to own a pen by these uh, people from this brand. And I got this calligraphy set. Now I will go through it. And I will explain what I like about it, what I don't like about it. And I'll, I'll show you how all the different nibs write. Because as you can see... This comes with a variety of nibs, and it would probably be interesting to demonstrate what they can do. So first of all, a fairly nice box, fairly simple box, but a nice box nonetheless. And you see this big empty space there, well, that just held a bunch of uh, standard short international cartridges. Now, I'm, uh, they kept falling out when you open this up, and uh, they kept falling out, and I'm sure that if you're watching this video, you, you probably know what a standard international cartridge looks like. So it came with a variety of colors, uh, which is actually nice. I think it was some red, blue, green, uh, some interesting stuff. So you can immediately start experimenting with different colors, which is really nice. And one other interesting feature is that you can lift out the actual pen uh, holding thing. And in it was this nice little um, brochure-like thing, which gives you details, fairly a lot of details. I think. Quite a lot of details about how to do calligraphy. You can't see it probably unless you're on side, but uh, you see how to do different alphabets, etc. That's a nice touch. It will give you some uh, inspiration. Let's look at the pen. Um, this is a very simple pen. It is a fountain pen. Uh, as I said, it takes international cartridges. It also takes converter. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, nothing special about this pen. It does have the uh, Brownsdale logo and oh, now I'm starting to speak Dutch, sorry, the Brownsdale logo um, and uh, it's it's simple. It's plastic, it's black, it's uh, got a, a gold-like clip which is not even gold-plated, it's just some weird alloy and it has a little ring over there which is the same material uh, and that's it. This is not a typically a pen that will typically lend itself to, to posting. This is uh, the, the cap is a bit difficult to, to put in the back of the pen um, and I, as a matter of fact I don't ever post it with calligraphy it's I don't know this is a bit too big to my liking so a simple cap some um, interesting hole like structure going on there um, I don't see why I would want air in the cap because that will dry out the pen but it's, it's some typical construction now, as you can see here, this is not a typical nib, right? This is a real calligraphy nib. This is the 4B nib, so broad, 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 broad. This is really broad. Now, even so, it is not even half a centimeter, so it's it's less than 5 millimeters wide. Um, but, okay, now the, the interesting thing about the, uh, the the pen is that you can just unscrew it, as you would probably unscrew any normal pen. You see that it currently has a international cartridge in it and you can just replace the whole uh, grip section with another one from the extensive choice offered by the set 
so that's an interesting thing, an interesting feature, I think. Um, and, and that's, I, I think, pretty much all that is to be said about the, the physical build of the pen. It is plastic, but it, it doesn't feel particularly cheap, and I think that's a, a good thing. Uh, so it's, it's, it's pleasant to hold. The, the nice thing is that the grip, as you can see, is really textured, so there is no way your fingers are going to slip, and if you're doing calligraphy for a long time, then that's really pleasant and really comfortable. So that's a good touch. Um, I like the 4B nib the best because I like to do large lettering and then the wider the nib the better it is. Of course if you do real calligraphy you probably want to have a dip pen. Everyone always says you have to get a, hit, a dip pen. There is something to be said for that. Yes they offer some features like a more slanted nib that you don't get in this set. Um, that would be useful. It's it's they they have ink reservoirs. I mean they're they're pleasant to use, but sometimes, especially when you're starting out, you just want to do a lot of lettering. You don't want to dip your pen every time you've written one or two words, um, and then a pen like this is really useful. So if you're starting out with calligraphy, I can really recommend getting a fountain slash calligraphy pen that you can use to you know practice lettering without having to dip every time again. So. Um, anything else to say about this? I don't think so. The only thing is that, as far as I'm concerned, they could have included a an even broader nib. But you know, with a fountain pen, there is sort of a physical limit to what you can do, I suppose. So that's that's fine. In all, I I like the pen. It's a bit light, but it is all plastic, so that's kind of to be expected. And it's uh, it's funny and it's Dutch. So that's um, that's interesting too. Let's go through the other stuff in the uh, the, the, the kit here. Um, first of all, it, it comes with a converter, which I, I was surprised that, that because this is a I don't know 26, 27, 28 euro set, um, so that this came with a converter was a, was a big surprise. So you can use bottled ink, and this is an extremely simple converter. You just put it in the pen and you push this and you pull it and then it, it you know, suck in ink. Um, so that's really simple to use. Uh, I did find find it to be a little leaky at times. I seem to get some ink in the barrel, at the back side of the barrel. So that's not that great. Um, but all right, whatever. Uh, it's it's actually what I do now is just take an international cartridge and just refill it every time with an ink syringe. That works just fine. It's funny, by the way, that this converter is actually made in England and not in the Netherlands. So that's uh, that's fascinating. Um, completely useless bit of trivia, but still. Um, so that's the, the pen, you have the converter, and then you have all the different nibs. Now I'll go through them very briefly, but it's much more interesting to show you how they write. So I'll keep this brief and then I'll, I'll show you how they write and give a bit more of explanation there. The interesting thing is it starts out with a fine nib. Now this is an italic nib, so it's a, it's a stub nib. Um, meaning it is not rounded in this case, it is really flat, so it's a really block-like nib, and that is great if you do calligraphy because you want to have flat lines and you want to have thinner lines and thicker lines depending on how you angle the pen. I'll show you that in a, in a minute. So this is a fine nib, um, I think about, well, not even a millimeter probably. Um, Nice. This is actually okay. I never do calligraphy with this. It's too small for me. As I said, I like bigger lettering. But this is something you can actually use to write on a daily basis because it's it's fine enough to 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 not be broad. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, it's fine enough not to to disturb your your normal handwriting. And your handwriting will get a specific touch with that. Again, I'll show you that in a minute. After the fine, we get a medium. A medium. What would that be? I guess that would be close to a millimeter. Um, that's actually nice too. This is another one you could use for normal everyday handwriting, I guess. Uh, so again, all of these are, are stubs. Uh, so again, this this flat ended uh, stuff going on there. It's um, uh, yeah, this is pretty nice. But again, I don't use this for calligraphy. I just use this every now and then for some normal writing. Then you come to the broad. Now here things get well. You could possibly use this in everyday handwriting but I think your handwriting will become illegible because it is this is already fairly broad so you really have to know what you're doing to, to get that right um, but this too is a, an okay nib well I guess the next one in the line should then be the one that I have on there the 4B so this is really broad 
Again, not even 5 millimeters, but it is definitely broad and you cannot use this in normal handwriting. Unless you have a really peculiar hand, but I, I think that would be very difficult and very tiring especially to use. Because you need to be constantly reminding yourself of the angle you need to, to write. And with the finer nibs that's okay, but with this one that would really interfere with your writing. Then we have two nib types that you will not find in every calligraphy set. Uh, these are specialty nibs. They are called scroll nibs. Now I hope you can see that, but you can probably see there is something like a, a hole in the nib. I think if I bring it close to the camera it cannot focus anymore, but you can probably see the overall shape, which is what I'm talking about. So you have the nib, then a little sort of indent thing going on, and then another little bit of the nib. And the good thing about that is that if you write you get two lines. Now that may sound like a stupid concept, but actually it's a lot of fun. You can do some interesting things with this. Definitely not everyday writing, but for some calligraphy purposes this is really nice. And of that type, the scroll nib, you get two. A number four and a number six. I have no idea what that means because the number six is definitely not six millimeters wide, uh, but nevertheless you get some variation in how broad you want the lines to be. As I said, these are specialty nibs. They are fascinating and require a little bit of practice to use well, but um, well, there you have it. It's uh, they're interesting in any case. So, that's the Brownsville uh, calligraphy pen. As I said, I would recommend this if you are considering starting out with calligraphy. Experienced calligrapher, well, that's uh, still nice pens, but you know, I think something like uh, um, Pilot Parallels uh, are, are more interesting in that regard because they offer even wider nibs, which is interesting. On the other hand, if you buy a set like this, you'll get a variety of nibs ranging from fine to 4B, which is a pretty huge range, and you get two scroll nibs, which are nice to play around with. Uh, so, in all, it's, it's recommended. And I do think that for a relatively cheap pen, I mean 27 euros for what is it? Six different nibs and a pen holder and a, a converter and some uh, cartridges. It's not a lot. Uh, and for that amount of money, I think the pen actually looks fairly classy and nice. And it's Dutch. Uh, so that's, uh, that's what I had to tell about the uh, pen. The writing with the pen, I have found, is fairly smooth, although it does have some startup problems. Sometimes when you haven't used it for a while, or even if you have been using it for a while, it tends to skip a little and you need to really make a few movements like that and a separate sheet of paper to get the ink flow started up again. And that has nothing to do with ink running out, that is really an, an issue of the pen and the feed. Um, so that that is a, a pity, but I, I if I have to do some real high-end calligraphy to, to give it to someone or something, I don't use this pen anyway. As I said, I, I like the uh, the Pilot Parallels better uh, in that to that effect, actually. So, an interesting pen. I think it's good for beginners, and um, it's Dutch. So that's a good thing, right? Um, that's what I have to tell about this pen and the way it writes. The next thing I'll do is I will show you how each and every nib writes. A little word of warning. Uh, I only have one of these nibs actually inked up because uh, there's just a, a cartridge in there but I, I don't want to take it out and put it in every nib because that then I have to get the ink flow started. So what I did is the 4B nib is um, inked up with Noodless anti feather, my absolutely favorite calligraphy ink. Um, so that's black and all the others I have just dipped into Waterman Blue. Um, Clearly, if you dip a pen like this, it may give it may be a bit wetter than it would be usually. But I, I particularly, I really chose the the, the Waterman Blue because I think that's a, uh, not too wet an ink, so it it should look okay. And the way I, I it looked the way it would look if I put in a cartridge. So don't worry about that. That should be fairly representative. And um, that's it. So I'll show you how they write. And um, I'll see you later. Bye. 
Okay, so writing with the Branzel, what I will do is I will write with all of the nibs that came with the set. Um, the only thing is, currently I don't use the converter, I just use a, a cartridge. And I have a cartridge in this specific grip slash nib uh, section, but not in the other. So I will use the others as a dip pen that will make them a little wetter than normal, but uh, bear with me, it's, it's a lot of work to fill all of these things up with a converter. Let's start with, uh, well, let's not start with that one, actually. Let's start with the fine nib that came with it. And I think that is one of the maybe two, maybe three, that you could use in daily writing. So this would be fine. Uh, it is a stub, which you can see clearly in the amount of line variation created like this. Um, a nice nib, a fairly smooth nib for something that is this flat. Um, as you can see, you can actually do normal handwriting with this. Uh, so that's uh, that's actually an interesting nib for everyday use, I, I guess, if you are inclined to use a, a stub nib uh, like this. Then that should work out. Let's move up a notch. This is the medium nib. As I said, this is a calligraphy pen, so all of these nibs will be stubs. So here we have medium. The ink is just um, uh, Waterman Blue, by the way, nothing fancy. Here you really see the line variation becoming more clear. So you see that this is already, the medium is quite a bit wider than the fine. Then we'll go for the um, broad. Broad. Now here clearly stuff is going on in the sub-direction, you can really see the amount of line variation possible with this. Still, this is something you might be able to use on a daily basis uh, if you enjoy a stub nib like this. Let me move the camera down a little. Um, but already this is getting pretty wide, so for everyday writing, I'm not sure whether this is suitable. Then we will switch to the 4B, which is uh, currently filled with noodless anti feather. I have to start it up again. There we go. So that's the pen I did this uh, little bit of calligraphy with. Not my best calligraphy, it is fairly quickly, but just to give you an idea. So here we have 4B. Now, I think this is 3 millimeters wide. So That's quite a bit, and you can see that the line variation here is massive, which is to be expected from a calligraphy pen. Uh, so it is, it is. Uh, this is really a pen made, designed to be used in calligraphy. Um, so this is not for everyday writing. If you would do that. And you see, it's it's the flow is getting hampered, and it's it's really not meant for that. I think you will not end up with legible text there. Okay, let's let's switch the page here. Turn the page, of course. I'll take this out, and then we'll have a look at the final two nibs, which are scroll nibs. Now that is something truly special. Um, this is something you will only use in calligraphy, and I'll show you why. So this. If you have a Swiss Army knife, you may have one of those weird little implements. Let me see. Let's 
see that. That's the fish descaler. I'm not a, an angler myself, but you can use these like, these things to rub the scales of fish when they are dead, hopefully. And this little gadget is meant to twist the hook from a fish's mouth. Well, these nibs always remind me of that uh, because they have this really weird split thing going on there. You see that? So you have a fairly wide bit and then a little hole and then a narrower bit. Now you may wonder what the hell is the function of that. Well, I'll try to show you. You don't see anything, right? But now you do. A scroll nib. And if you were to do some gothic calligraphy with that, not the best I've ever done, but just to give you an impression, Oops, that was a little narrow. Gott sei Dank. Uh, thank be to God. Well, there you have it. Uh, that's a, a very interesting nib, I think, to use. It, it, you can do some, some really uh, flashy stuff with this. You could even use it for everyday writing, although I don't think your boss will appreciate it if your notes to him will suddenly look like this. Um, this is really meant for, for the weird stuff, and it's uh, very easy to use. Uh, if you, clearly, if you would read, want to attain this effect, uh, then you would use uh, a pen, and you have to trace every line twice, right? You make the line and you make it again. And a, a scroll nib like this will allow you to do that in one go. But that's really a, a specialty nib that's really made for calligraphy and not for everyday writing. So, here's the final uh, scroll nib in the uh, kit. The first one said scroll number four. This is scroll number six. I don't exactly know what the six is for because these little squares are 5 by 5 millimeters and this is so clearly not 6 millimeters so I'm not exactly sure uh, what it means I have to say I hardly ever use scroll nibs but okay so um, yeah this one's difficult to use Scroll number six. So, of course, the interesting thing is that if you move the pen diagonally like this, you only get one line, albeit a bit broad one line, um, and move it like this, and then you get the two lines. Now, this here is just because I've loaded too much ink onto the feed. It's not meant to be used as a dip pen, um, but I'm sure you have an idea of the nibs. And this is actually the feed scraping across the paper. I tend to angle my pen a bit oddly. Okay. So, just to give you an idea of the different nibs in this set, um, I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, post a comment and otherwise. Um, thanks for watching. In any case, bye-bye.